Hello everybody. Okay, that you're here with me to paint a new portrait. Okay. Okay, here are the colors. Uh, this is titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, kinocridone rose, which is basically the same as alizarin crimson, raw umber, and ivory black. Okay, today I'm gonna paint Monica Belushi. Okay. Oh, let's see. Hello, hello, Nikki. Hello, Gary. Hello. Sorry, I don't know how, how to pronounce your, your name uh, uh, for the first comment. Uh, hello, Michael. Hello, Matt. Hello, Somitahi. Hello, Gina. Hello, Ashon. Okay, I'm going to start sketching with raw umber. I don't use any medium, just the just paint directly from the tube. But I, I, I mean, uh, sometimes I use it, okay, when I'm gonna paint it at the background. Uh, let's see, one thing, I, I wanna check out the size of the head. I always start with simple, straight lines. And that way, it's easy for me to block in the position of the face and move it, okay? And usually, I use always my canvas as part of the palette. A portion of the canvas as a palette. Okay, let's see the size of the whole face. The head is on top. Okay, a little bit of the neck. Yeah, I think that's good. Let me check out here on my screen. Maybe I should move it a little bit more to the left. Everything here is going to be darker. The face light dark here. I think that's okay. Mm. Yeah, I think that's okay. Hey man, you know, maybe I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to to the edge. A little bit, just a little bit. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna start painting the darker values. That's a rule. Okay, when you got the background that's pretty dark and you're planning to paint it dark, we gotta start with always the, the, the background. When you're planning to paint it dark, if you're planning to paint it just mid-tone, you can just leave it and start with a face. Okay, hello Judy Kael, hola Mario, hello Dita, hello Cesarte, hello Marios, Evelyn, Sylvia, Gary, Fela, hello Randall. Are you painting flat or on an easel? My painting is on an easel. Okay. I'm gonna start just with raw umber, okay? I got two raw umbers. This one is from Rembrandt, which is pretty nice, transparent, greenish. And this one is from Winton. Okay, I use this one. It's not a transparent, a little bit thicker. I use this one when I'm gonna paint something dark and I don't want to paint it, uh, let's say, I don't want to use black. Sometimes when something is pretty dark, I gotta use black. But I prefer this one now for this painting. This is a thin brush. It's kind of a little, a little bit stiff. I plan to buy a, a, a set of bristle brushes. All of the bristle brushes I got are just smaller ones. I need a bigger one to paint on this fast. Okay, everything dark here. Even now that I don't have anything on my canvas, I'm squinting down my eyes. You know, to see this shadow here, dark here, dark here, dark here. When we squint down, it's easy just to see. Not, not, I'm not thinking that's a face, okay? You're just thinking that it's something flat and, and just trying to copy the overall shape and all the darker values. That right now in my head is just about darker flat values. For this, I need 
Lean seed oil. I don't have any lean seed oil. But this is when I usually use mini for the background. Oh, hello Dita, hello Sylvia, hello Petra, hello Nolan, Nolan saying hello is a reminder to have right time for tonight. Oh yeah, for the drawing session tonight. Yeah, yeah, I already, already, I already have the photograph. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna post it as soon as I finish here. I'm planning to paint for a couple of hours. Maybe a bit more, it depends. Okay. Okay, now, I always measure, okay? Now, when you measure, uh, let's say when you check out proportions, no measure in the photograph, you know, the regular proportions for any face, like from the eyebrows to the nose, the nose, the chin. Basically, this knowledge is for to draw portraits from imagination, okay? Uh, obviously, like it, this is kind of when you measure this you're gonna see that every face is pretty close to this measurement when the uh, when to place the eyes we split this in three portions but when the face is tilted backward like in this case the eyes usually move down sometimes even to halfway from the eyebrows to the nose sometimes and on top of this we place the eyes okay for the mouth we split this in two and then we place the mouth on top of this line. Now, we know the proportions, okay? We know then, I will check out then, I pay attention to the photograph and the proportion that I see on, on her face. I could measure, I could pick up proportional divided, which I, th I think is a terrific tool, and do this. If I'm working from the photograph, it's the same size, I could do this, I can check out the light mint, okay? Or if I want to, you know, the complete challenge, I can just draw by eye, by observation. But anyway, when, even when we draw by eye, it, it doesn't mean that we're not measuring. It means maybe that we're not doing that physically or showing that, but definitely if, if we've been doing that for so many times, it's already with us. Even when we don't do it, you know, we're doing that mentally. Okay. Now, I'm squinting and trying I, I love the, the face, the picture, the expression, I love, you know, her face, but I, do, I, I see that I don't see too much contrast. I got a screen on my eyes, another option that we could uh, have is just darken up the photograph. I know for, for the ones that you saw me painting uh, the children the other day, you know, the kid the other day, uh, I Basically, I, I pick up the photograph, I make it really dark to see clearly darker values. We could do that with any photograph. To be able to see clearly, you know, all the value, because we need the values to, to, to copy the likeness, to copy, to get volume. It's not just about drawing. It's not just about linear drawing. Okay. Too reddish, I'm gonna add a little bit of Naples yellow and raw umber to make it a little bit greenish. You know, raw umber is is brown, but it's a, brown, a greenish, let's say a brown that is kind of greenish. Yeah, I think this is better. More raw umber and Naples yellow. Uh, Nikki says that she's she's gonna draw or even paint with me. Oh, that's pretty nice, Nikki. Okay, 
Hello, Maji. Hello, Katy Fleming. Hello, Astri. Hola, Darius. Hola, Eloisa. Oh yeah, I painted here a couple, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, Gary. That was uh, uh, yeah, maybe more than a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. Thinking about mid tones. Thinking about the reddish colors on the face, and lights and highlights. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Just uh, the, the the best option we have to to work on the face or, or on anything is just to think about uh, values in terms of that. Imagine that you're just working with one color, one color, no more, but you create a value scale. Now, obviously, some uh, this is let's say for beginners. If you want the full challenge, obviously you can start just applying color, all the colors that you see on the face and values, and all at once. I mean, that's impossible to apply all at once, but what I mean, not in a specific order. I, I usually I try to keep an eye first just on values. Values, and that way I don't get distracted with color. And at some point, when I got the values on the face and I compare and I see that the light, the mid-tones and the shadows are really close and if those values are, are good, it means that I, I could say that uh, the face is rounded, you know? When I got that right, then I started thinking about color, okay? Yeah. Now, let's see, uh, when, when it's about color, we make adjustments. When we make adjustments, definitely we're gonna change values Okay, we make adjustments to get the values, to get the color. When we got that, and obviously the drawing is, is good, we start thinking about edges. Okay, when we think about edges is when we start to get some softness or softness on the face, on air, atmosphere, or you know, something that's gonna make the portrait a painting portrait. Okay, you can go with the tears, you can go with, with softness. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see here, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna pause. When I pause, I pimple my eyes between, you know, uh, painting and photograph. And you will see what I'm doing, you know? Look at the value scale. I could right now start thinking about color and do this. And add, add the reddish colors on the face. Yeah? No. But sometimes I do that, sometimes I just prefer to pay attention just to values. And when I see the face and I think, hey, this is going to be difficult. Then I try just to pay attention to values and at the same time that adding values, keep my eyes on the drawing. Okay. When I see a face that's going to be, let's say it, that I think that's going to be easier. Now that is kind of difficult because, you know, so many times I have seen a, a face and I said to myself, oh, this is going to be easy to get the likeness. <clears throat> and when, when I'm in the middle of the process, it is kind of, wow, it's the toughest one that I ever painted. Yeah, but this one in particular, you know, I got the feeling that to get the expression, this is going to be hard. As I'm painting, I always, you know, bouncing my eyes between photograph and painting. All the time, I keep doing that, portrait after portrait. Okay. 
keep doing the same always I don't think not even once that hey you know I've been painting this for 20 years maybe I could skip some steps no way But even even that when I start the painting, it could look as a, as a mess because I got too many crazy brush strokes. Even when it's a mess, I know that I'm gonna find find the order on all the mess. Okay, <clears throat> like that. This what I have is a shadow, a mid tone, and something that let's say that's the local color. Okay. Now I'm gonna add some lights. I love this brush to add the light. What I'm gonna do is just use the same color, colors, colors, umber, orange, nipple yellow, and white. I'm about to buy a new camera yeah. and I'm about to ask you all for money no I'm kidding I'm kidding but if somebody you know have a lot of money yeah that would be nice a super chat <laughs> I'm teasing you all guys don't worry I got everything under, under control okay let's see lights now, when we paint the face, we know something around it. We check out where's the light coming from, you know, and we kind of know where it's gonna be the light on the face and how the light is gonna move to a shadow, to the other side, to the other side. It's the same way that if we, if we know the face, let's say, is made of flat planes, we will know that this color it goes all the way to the edge and there's gonna be a different value here. You know, I imagine that from here is different planes, 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 planes that go darker, darker, darker as they go to the contour of the face. Of course, not, not the nose, you know. Okay, let's see. A bit more color. <clears throat> Keep it squinting. Okay, got the light on the face, yeah, that's good, that's good, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna blend a little bit, Okay, one, one thing that I'm thinking now is the skin color. I got the values. That this is that I have the, the paint like this, it doesn't mean anything, you know. I'm gonna blend it, or maybe I'm gonna just keep it like that. You all know that I'm gonna blend it. Okay, I'm thinking about lights, mid-tones, and shadows. Now that I got the values here, and let's say that the drawing for, for, for me is kind of okay, because I see the eyes, I see the alignment of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, you know, I'm checking with the photograph, remember I got the photograph same size as the photograph to my left, 
which makes pretty easy for me to just do this and this end of the brush is gonna just be on the mouth on the photograph and this one of on my painting and maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna it could be something off but that's gonna be maybe one millimeter or two but it's gonna be pretty close that's an advantage that's a real advantage okay now I'm gonna add some color Moving to the other value. As you see, I'm not laying down too much paint. painting with my eyes you know almost like 80% of the time my eyes are squinted down but I, got, I gotta rest my face because I start to feel you know the muscles because we gotta tense the muscles on the face to keep to keep the eyes squinted hello Sharon hello spirit history thank you Hello, Krista Bolden. Hello, the heart of art. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Oh, Mario is saying that. Gracias, muy didáctico. Puedo ver las sombras, medios tonos y luces. The Mario say, saying that he sees so clearly that even when he doesn't understand me, he's, he, can, he can see clearly lights, mid-tones, and shadows. Yeah. I think this is clear too, you know, about the, the, the spots where we got you know, a warmer color on the skin, a reddish color. There are things that we need to practice to by repetition. For example, here there is light here, there is light here. No, look. When I was painting this light, I, I, I just one second I thought, hey, I need a light here. I didn't see the picture for that, and I know there is a bump here. Every time that you paint a portrait, try to remember those little things, because those are the muscles on the face. And yeah. We all got the same muscles and bones. The bone bone structure is the same. We can round it, wrap it up this with you know paint that follows the same form of the, the, the bone structure. Okay, uh, keep squinting. 
Okay. Did you see your painting? You think hey, that's too 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 reddish? No, just leave it there. It's, uh, we got just started. We're gonna make a lot of adjustments here. We need to put paint here again and again. And uh, one thing about uh, this side of the face. Okay, I'm gonna pick up black, pure black. I'm gonna just pick up thicker because uh, black is kind of the same like uh, with uh, white. With white, you you gotta apply thicker in order to see white, white. And usually, you you gonna find yourself applying the white twice. With black, it's the same. You think that if you just pick up a little bit of black and just spread it, that's enough. That's dark, dark enough. It's not. And now what I use, why I'm using pure black, you just want to see this darker value here. And remember that this is not a dark that's going to represent for real something really dark. Like when you see some, some, some corner of the house when the house is with no light, that's really dark. This is flat. This is the darker pigment on top of a flat surface. There's no way that this black is gonna, you're going to compare it with something real, real dark because of the absence of light okay mm. let me see Be careful, be, uh, we gotta be uh, very careful when we use black because definitely it's gonna pollute the other colors and black is pretty dangerous but when we need a darker value we need a darker value of course we can just mix raw umber and ultramarine blue for example yeah that's a good option I just want to paint faster. Yeah. Okay, hello Lily. Yeah. Did they say when I see this, I had to think it is going to be good? Yeah, I think the same. <laughs> There is George in, uh, there is another person with the photo behind her. Yeah, yeah. The look at there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is. You know, this pic this photograph is from a, from a movie. The Passion, I think is the name. Passion. Yeah. Christ. Passion Christ. Christ. Passion. I don't remember the name. But that's from the movie. Okay. I don't remember her character. I think that's she's the mother of Jesus, Jesus' mom. I don't, I don't remember. Or maybe the other woman is. Got raw umber here with kind of on rose. Too reddish. Just need raw umber with Naples yellow. If it looks kind of greenish, it does good. Okay. That's good. That's the color that we need there. Why? Because uh, we got green there. We got something reddish here. This color is going to pop forward. This color is going to recede and that complete the illusion of that the form is turning. 
we got some contrast here be between one color and the other. If we make this dark reddish like this one, I mean, with value we can create the same illusion, you know. But if we change the color a little bit, that's going to be better. And at the same time we got some uh, variation, you know, some color variety on the skin. It's not good with the width of the face. Let's see if I got some questions. Uh, new Singer. Uh, okay. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Astrid. Thank you. Hello, Leslie. Are you changing brushes or continually wiping the same brush? No, I usually use different brushes. I ended up at the end like uh, using 10, usually 10. Or let's say from 10 to up to you know, so many brushes that I need. I don't, I don't clean it. So the brush for blending, that's the one that I'm going to clean it. Just wipe off with uh, uh, just a paper towel. Yeah, just that. I got a couple of brushes today for, for blending. Okay. But for the applica application, you know, for all the values, I prefer to have even one brush for each value I think it's, it's better and it's faster for me and I keep the colors clean uh, you know the face is kind of uh, some kind of harmony of relationship between values and and colors and a lot of the colors are just muddy colors a lot of them if you pick up pure orange and you put it here you're gonna see all the colors around that are just gray down colors I'm gonna start blending a little bit If I squint on my eyes, I see her face. I don't see the likeness, but what I mean, I see uh, the position of the eyes. Okay, the nose, the mouth. And even that, there, when there's no detail, I see that everything is on, on, on place.
I prefer to clean my brushes at the end. Not not cleaning the, the brushes just when I'm painting. And especially here on on on, you know, on a live stream. Uh, but I'm not saying that's the case all the time. No. Sometimes I remember the last time that I was painting uh, well, what it was, I don't remember, but it was a, a, a huge painting, like 60 by 60 inches. And I was just using one brush. I think it was just one brush, like for, for a couple of hours, maybe more. I just w w was wiping up the brush. And I was continuing just picking up paint. But that's what, that was for the first stage. Just for the first stage, that's okay. But later in the process, I just always pick up at least 20 brushes. And from, from there, I use maybe 10. I have seen painters just painting with a couple of brushes. And they do it pretty good. And this, you know, If that works for, for, for them, it's pretty good kind of develop or you know grow different habits yeah. I don't know to be honest when I started to use so many brushes or why and I think I don't remember exactly but it, I think maybe it was because I was trying to save some time Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to, the, the value here below the eye is too dark, I need to soften this, there's a darker value there but it's just too dark, it shouldn't be that dark. No, no. When you got the face like this, you can see basically that I got just let's say one color and reddish variations. Yeah. Then you can start adding more colors. Just we gotta be careful not to go crazy with uh, so many. We can add a lot of variation, you know, but not kind of keep it just under control. If uh, as soon as we see that maybe something is greenish or violet or too much glowing too much, we are knocking down. All the colors that you want to add on the face, they gotta be kind of subtle, and we gotta respect the values all the time. This is the brush that I keep cleaning, one of the brushes. Okay, now. I'm gonna continue adding more and more values at the same time that I continue drawing. Now I'm gonna start thinking about edges. Okay, definitely one edge or a sharp edge that I want here is the nose because we need to make the nose pop. Okay, now uh, about the eye, we don't want a uh, really dark underlined for the lower eyelid. We need a darker value which is different. Okay, don't outline the eye. I mean what I mean on top uh, and bottom. You know you know I know that we see that and the thing is that we tend to exaggerate what we see and the way that we have I'm speaking my own experience okay uh, what happened to me and what I have seen it's like the way that we have to place details or make correction it's usually it's just adding lines it's like we gotta go we need to go back to a stage where we can use a pencil and make corrections 
Okay, think that at some point we're basically erasing any line that we see on the picture. Any pencil stroke, we just want values here. And when we think about values, we think about always the same. Where are we gonna see where we're gonna see darker values, midtones and lights, and how we can just you know keep them to keep volume. For example, something that I know, I know uh, and I know that because I have painted portrait so many times. Uh, I know that it doesn't mean like I'm gonna get that right every time no you know i wish that could happen but i know for example one thing that here the value is a little bit darker always even when i don't see it okay there here the value is dark i see this one because yeah? this represents the lateral plane of the nose i know that here is darker Okay, it's kind of when you do that, so you do something so many times, you're trying to realize that, hey, this is happening again on this portrait, on this one, and this one. Yeah, that's anatomy of the face, okay? I, eyebrows. I want a sharp, a sharp eyebrow here. dark well, another eyebrow here as I lay down the brush stroke I check out the photograph What I mean is I pimp on my eyes, okay? Photograph and painting. See, I know the sh there's a shadow here. Okay. Okay, one thing, when you lay down the light on the face, lights, the light that you do on the paint here, no, it's not as it's not as bright as the light that we paint here. Okay, it's a different light. Don't don't pay. You know, do you realize that we gotta pay attention to those little things. Don't think that's the same. Okay, this is one light and this is another light. We gotta show a difference there. Okay, now. Squint out your eyes again and check out where's the lightest light. I think it's the forehead. The bridge of the nose. The tip of the nose definitely because we want this to pop in here. Then to create volume, you know we got light here. Light. Because we want to make this rounded light here because there's a bump here and obviously light here okay okay I got a question here. Marius is saying, uh, oh, thank you, Mats, the Norwegian, uh, that uh, I don't use yellow ochre. Uh, yeah, I don't use it, use it that much. Yeah. No, there's no any particular reason, just, no, just don't, don't use it that much, just that. Maybe I, I will some point 
It's just like nipples jello. You know, nipples jello is a color that I like it, but it's not something that I could use all the time. You no, know, it's something that even I was thinking, mm, uh, that I'm not gonna use that this color. You know, this tube is gonna stay here, the tube with me, maybe for the next the next year. And I've been using this lately again and again, and I kind of like it. And maybe I'm gonna keep using that, and then becomes a new color for on my palette. Okay. I just that it's not that sometimes we need some colors, sometimes we love all other colors. Uh, for portrait painters that I have heard of, uh, like so many portrait painters, that so many consider uh, they say this what's the name? Paints gray, like a must. All earth colors, a must on the palette. Yeah, you know, Naples yellow, like a must. They 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 love those colors. I mean, for me, yeah. Uh, did you check out my, 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 my videos? I haven't used Naples yellow like never. I'm using this lately. Yeah, but just just that, you know, we find a color we like it, we we use it. Yeah. I'm gonna blend the face a bit more. I'm gonna zoom in to show you the amount of paint I have here. Not too much. You see, it's enough paint to show the light on the face and the amount, enough amount to blend it. Even I could just let it dry a little bit after like four hours, let's say five hours, maybe more, and just blend it. After that time it becomes pretty easy to blend. You know, you pick up a brush, a brush for blending obviously. You go on top, wow, it feels like it's not doing anything, it's just the painting is blending along. Okay. Okay, I think I need a little bit of shadow here. Okay, let's 
work on the on, on some details. Okay, first just black, raw umber, a little bit of a lizard and green. So. Okay, I'm gonna work on the eyes. Okay. Oh, Perry Kovish. You see, it's possible to make portraits with great likeness if the model is not present at the moment of painting um, with n without reference a reference pick. Wow, that would be pretty difficult. I haven't tried that. You know, I haven't seen any anyone doing that. I don't know. Uh, uh, one thing for sure that maybe if, if a painting is in that st this stage okay, you see the mouth is kind of blurry and the nose and the eyes okay I think I'm pretty sure that at, at this stage uh, maybe we can get away with some likeness but insinuation no precision just insinuation maybe somebody's gonna see it, say hey I see that I see the person there you know we created an illusion of accuracy just with some values but it doesn't mean like uh, it's gonna be perfectly perfectly but one thing the more we add details uh, to get the likeness we're gonna need more and more and more details okay I have seen that in so many portraits it's just like uh, you know somebody says a, see a portrait okay that's kind of blurry and they can recognize the person that's painted there yeah. and when they see the, per, the, the, the painting with more details they kind of like they are able to see when something is off we all have an eye for a face. I mean, what I mean, we don't have an eye to critique when something is off because we see, you know, faces all the time. Everywhere around us, we kind of know when we see a face and the eyes are off. That's, that's normal, that's natural. Okay. And, but the thing is that, for example, Paintings. This is something that, that one of my teachers showed me, uh, or point, pointed pointed out on some in, in a painting. It was on a Rembrandt painting. And especially that I keep repeating this to you know to my patrons, like what happens on on an eye on a Rembrandt painting that is in the shadow. And when you pay attention, there's nothing there. Just a couple of brush strokes. But it's, it's just like our brain completes what is missing there. And that's enough. And at some point we got the feeling that that's enough. And we see an eye. Okay. That's the same. And I have heard so many times, you know, in order to get the likeness. And even that was an advice I got once. I don't even remember who told me that. Like, don't paint a lot of details. We don't need details for the likeness. Just insinuation. That's gonna be easier. The more details you add, the more you're gonna get into into just adding more and more and more. And let's say your client is gonna be able to judge and say, hey, you know, something's missing here. Okay. Maybe you all uh, have heard the same here and there. Who knows? I don't know, you know, it's just like, um, I, tr I always try to copy details. Maybe not tiny details like uh, eyelashes or, you know, but copy details in terms of the, the shadows, mid-tones, uh, that's another thing, you know, that, and values, values are pretty important to, to copy the likeness. We think that just with uh, lines is enough. That's why we, gotta, we learned that the hard way, you know, when we trace 
the portrait. And I'm not saying the tracing is not is not okay. Tracing tracing is okay. And but we trace it. We paint it on top. And I think this maybe had happened to a lot of people. And then they don't get the likeness and they say, why? The drawing was perfect. I traced it. You know, it's perfect. There's no way the drawing is, is there. Yeah, but the, if the values are off, uh, you're not going to get the likeness. It's going to be closer because the drawing is there. But if the values are off, you know, the likeness is not, it's not going to be completely there. And then we realize, oh, okay, it's not just about tracing. It's not about the perfection of the drawing. It's about values. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's why we keep squinting, you know. We keep uh, using something like a really old, old really old tool that's a, a black mirror that what what I use is just my cell phone it's pretty hard to see something you know but I use it anyway everything helps every tool of their helps I gotta move to the to the other eye. I stayed too much time in one eye. I don't do that usually. That's my rule. I gotta just work on one eye and then move really fast to the other one. Okay. I'm not done with the eyes, you know, we move over the portrait, laying down brush strokes over and over and over, again and again, on the same areas, again and again. Yeah. And we love, we love to do that. <laughs> Tricky this portion here. I gotta narrow the frontal plane of the nose. Okay. Okay. Oh, hola, Leonidas. Thank you, Dante. Uh, John Kostov is asking me, I wanted to ask you, do you paint straight on the linen, linen canvas or put some ground on the canvas before? I always add an extra layer of gesso to my canvas. Yeah, always. I, I usually, I, I, you know, I, lately I've been, I've been buying the, the canvas on the store for, uh, by meters by foot you see you know and 
stretched stretched here because a lot of uh, have a lot of stretched stretched bars, and then I add an extra layer of gesso. Yeah. And then I turn the canvas with acrylic. I always use acrylic. Just, just that. Just I mix orange, cadmium orange, and old, with ultramarine blue, and add this wash, just with a lot of water. And I got this orangey canvas. I could use, a, you know, sometimes uh, gray. I've been using lately. This orangey canvas, you know, I like it. But for a couple of years, I have been I've been using gray, just gray, just black and white, which you got some kind of bluish gray. Clean the brush. Okay, let's work on the nose. Raw umber and alisa and crimson. Okay. Uh, let's see, this will be around here. And this here. Mm, let's check out. Uh, no, I'm going to move this a little bit to the left. Mm, okay. Mm, I think it's kind of close. Yeah. More, more red. I wanna do this. Okay, here I'm going to have this mark. Okay. Now for the for the lips. Here is darker. Okay. Now obviously I'm gonna pick up a darker color. Try to keep it soft. Uh, I smooth out the paint, but I don't add details. Not yet, not like a tiny detail. If you see this eye, you know, it's kind of blurry. I, I'm trying to control that, how much detail I'm gonna put on, on the face. How many sharp edges there. Now what I'm gonna move this. Uh, I think I got the upper lip too too thick. I'm gonna move this up. Let me check out. Yep, yeah. yep, that's good. Close enough. Okay. Sharp edge here. And I can make it kind of soft here. How soft? You gotta control that. You gotta do it, do, do it by, by, by yourself. How I many? How soft? How sharp? Just, just remember that uh, sharp, sharp edge is not gonna do any good. We can choose. To sharpen sometimes on edges that we don't see sharp. Okay, 
but let, we gotta just find the perfect balance. For example, here on the nose, I could choose to sharpen here, even if I don't see it. sharp edge here okay this little thing I don't see that on the photograph okay because uh, this, uh, there is pretty soft I'm gonna move it a little bit down I think it's too up but I do it I leave it there for for a moment to see if that's working or not maybe it's not working I wipe off that or I soften that, smooth out the surface, I create a soft blurry edge. But first I gotta see if that's working. How is working? What I mean is I got the balance between soft edges everywhere and a sharp edge that's making the nose pop. It's doing that, if it's doing that it's good. If it's not, it's not good, you know, because if somebody just experimenting with this thing about ages, uh, you don't get it right. It's just at the end, you got just sharp edges everywhere. I would tell you just to try it really hard. And the thing is that I know that's difficult. I was saying this the other day. I say, I, you know, I repeat the same so many times. The things when you make it blurry, I know that you're basically destroying all the details that you've been building during the process. But sometimes we need that in order to show uh, some or areas of the face to make it pop, to make something some some areas receive. For example, on the mouth here, I don't do any good just by staying here working a lot, trying to get details. Why? I mean. No reason for me to stay there. I want to get the values, but I can keep all of this blurry. I'm pretty sure it's going to work pretty good. And pretty sure it's going to look like it's just turning. Okay. I better be careful with the values, okay? I don't want this lighter when it's darker. And let's say I'm simplifying that. But at the end I got what I want, what it is, I make the form just turn. Okay, I got, I'm trying to get the illusion that my brush stroke is some kind of wrap it up, wrap it up the form, this rounded form. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the nose. Okay, I'm gonna move the nose a little bit. This, this brush, this stroke a little bit to the left. I'm gonna blend it. Thank you, Wanda Flanagan on Facebook. Thank you, Tribo or Morsolo. Okay, let's see. 
Nikolai is saying, oh, this is an answer for another, for somebody that's commenting here. Hello, JJ, uh, GG North. Hello, Adrian. When you apply the grayish undertone, does it need to yield color, cooler colors when you apply the fresh tones on top compared to the orangey underpainting? Oh, not necessarily, you know. I've, like I said before, I mean, this, my my, my canvas is, like a, is a warm color. Okay, on the face, let's say that we work with more warm and neutral colors, no cool colors because I, we don't have any bluish color. But this could be a neutral color, kind of greenish. Okay, depending on the colors next to that, it, become, it can become warmer or cooler, but let's say that's a cool color, a uh, neutral color. It means it's not warm, it's not cool. Okay, those colors go usually around the face and on, on, on the contours and closer to the edges because we're trying to make the, the, the form turn. Just because that, that creates a nice contrast with the reddish one on the center of the face. Okay. Uh, sometimes I prefer, like I said before, my, I, I prepare my canvas grayish yeah, and orangey and maybe I'm going to experiment with more colors over the years. It's just like you, you all, you know, when I see something on YouTube, I think, hey, I could do that. Yeah. We got so many ideas, you know, from videos. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a sharp edge here. It's kind of reddish, but mm, let's see. Let's see if that works. Now I'm gonna soften this. dabbing to soften the edge. <clears throat> More questions? Life on, on YouTube and and Facebook. I'm saying that because maybe somebody just listened to me mentioning some names that you don't see on the comments is because they are for the other channel. it up okay, I'm gonna keep it here I think I gotta move a little bit up but not yet uh, as we continue painting just you know we move things okay you see this 
you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this curve perfectly. I'm building up that with straight lines, smaller strokes. I could even keep some of them if I want some more painterly approach. Okay, a little bit of light on the eyes. Got a little bit of light here and here. Okay, need to step back. Check out. Yeah, it doesn't look like here, but getting closer. <laughs> Hello M. Ross, hello Ben. Uh, thank you Michael Blay, Blayfins. Gracias Adriana. Okay, I'm gonna add one of my fav favorite colors lately. Chrome green. I'm preparing that color for the lights, highlights. Put some eyelashes. I'm gonna paint an eye eyelash here. Okay. 
need to buy more of these brushes. This uh, this one is just a liner brush, number zero. Something that I noticed that I went to buy a number zero the other day, like a month ago, and I got this one. Oh no, this is double zero. This one, I think. Uh, zero, I think this is the zero, zero. Look at the difference. <laughs> yes. Now it's smaller. These brushes, I mean, speaking about the brushes, are pretty cheap. Look at look what happens. <laughs> okay, I keep buying these because they are pretty cheap, but they are pretty good. Okay, they don't last that much, but I just love them. Pretty sure I could I could find uh, the same quality the big brand we just are just these are pretty useful in these ones sometimes I find these ones on places there where they sell uh, things for kids you know for school or for uh, craft that's the way to say it Okay, trying to keep here some softness with, with some sharp edges, for example here the nose, a little bit of a sharp edge there, okay, my intention is make the nose pop, obviously, that's why I got the sharp edge here and here, the, the, the color is a little bit lighter, Soften here. I'm just thinking I got this sharp edge on the nose. I could, I could get this effect just by softening here a lot. And keeping this sharp edge here on the edge. And this here. I'm speaking about this. Another sharp edge I could be here. Just a little bit there. Or a little bit down, a little bit down. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm trying to get here expression. It's darker, and I think it's a little bit up. Okay, I need a sh sharp edge here. goes down and is soft. A little bit of green. green this is chrome green that clear there's too much light here I think I should narrow the face a bit more. Okay, what about 
one up here. I need to make it darker, darker here too. What about the ear? Oh my god. Too many things to work. Okay. Sylvie saying sometimes it's not possible to have yellow chrome in the art shops. So just lemon yellow, do you think that's good? Yeah. Yep, yeah, lemon yellow is good. Hmm. Okay. Saying hi there on Facebook. I'm interested in this piece. Uh it look very they look very much as I wanted an art to be. Do you mind me getting them in NFTs? Okay. I don't know too much about that. Sorry. Okay. I got some people asking me, you know, similar questions. The thing is I don't know too much about NFTs. I have seen some artists like uh, getting their work on NFTs and to be honest the temptation is pretty pretty great because I have seen few of them making a lot of money but you know you know we all love money the thing is I don't know that much about that really you know not to the point that that maybe I'm gonna stay just doing what I do and I don't know, maybe my son, my daughter, if someday maybe they they got me into that NFT world. Maybe who knows. Somebody knows about that? But this is kind of... Uh, this I'm pretty sure it's something huge. Yeah? So this thing about NFTs. All the things uh, they have seen them in terms of... Oh no, I don't even know <laughs> what is that. Digital, you know, assets, all of that. I think they are just like the new the new world is just around those things. I investigate a little bit of that uh, some t like a, a year ago because I got, you know, like so many people asking me the same. And then uh, Okay, I'm gonna think about this just for us, just for a second. Okay, let's see. I think I need to narrow here the mandible a bit. Okay, what about that? Let me not do 
okay, I got some comments here. Gary saying, does her nose in the photo appear a little more pointed? I'm gonna check out, thank you. Hello, Denisa. Nikolai saying, her right mandibular have light accent that must be almost very cold on the level of horizontal crossing with her right mouth edge. Almost aligned with the vertical down from her right edge. I age. Oh, thank you on the checkout. Steve Greenwood is asking me about my brushes. Uh, synthetic brush. I use bristle brushes for the beginning and synthetic brush for blending. You use only turpentine. Rush is asking me. No, I don't use anything. No medium. What do you think about the width of the face? I think I need to narrow her, her face or just soften this a lot. I was thinking about a sharp edge on the, the mandibone to make it this, you know, pop a little bit. But just, I think I'm gonna soften this. Okay. Yeah, maybe I should keep, obviously, I should keep since she's. Her face is, you know, tilted uh, up. I could just try to have a, a sharp edge here on the mending bone. I'm changing the value there. You know, look at that. That's pretty light. I don't see the light there. Obviously, we see shadow. I want to see if this works as a sharp edge. A little bit of that. Just to pay attention here and make the face pop. Okay. Now I know the oops my mouth. Okay, one second. I just wanna know if that's gonna work. Okay, I need the brush for to continue with the edge down here. Instead of buying uh, the painting as an F NFT, why don't you buy the painting just like that? <laughs> just $200, just for you. Okay, let's see. Oh, Lindsay Doyle, no, I don't use Lindsay Doyle, I don't use turpentine. Nothing, nothing, nothing. No medium. I got a sharp edge here, this brush stroke. I like it. Uh, I was thinking that maybe I should keep it. Maybe don't touch it. Just keep it like that. Need to clean one brush here. One second. <clears throat> I'm gonna use thinner because this brush is kind of... I left this brush with oil paint for a couple of days. I forget to clean it. And now when that happens, I gotta use thinner. You know, thinner is pretty strong, pretty, you know. You gotta be careful of, 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 for the fumes because they can knock you down. Just uh, clean the brushes. If you want, if you decide to clean the brushes with, with thinner, just go to a ventilated area or even outside the house, outside to clean the brushes.
you know if somebody wants to support my channel you got there you can become a member of my channel for I think it's just two dollars I think it's so two three dollars per month you become a member of my, my channel and you can just so obviously you know, get, get access to recorded sessions the recorded some of the recorded sessions that I, I got on my Patreon account and if you want more uh, the Patreon account that's gonna be the the place you wanna go to watch at least for few a few amount every month at least 200 recorded lessons all of them are pain alone lessons that means that it's pretty similar to this but obviously the critiques makes the difference okay now I'm gonna think about the face that's the uh, about this edge here I wanted this edge Remember, just because, because I want the face to pop on this area. This is not something that I'm copying from the photograph. But because I'm not copying from the photograph, it means that I'm just using a, a perspective rule, which is if you have a sharp edge, you know, is it, that area is going to look like it's coming forward, and a soft edge is going to look like it's receding. Okay, I'm creating here sharp edge I'm not gonna I'm not checking right now like to see if that's working or not I just wanna just leave it there for a few for from some minutes before paying really attention to that and see if, if that's working Chrome green with white. This is light here. I can use chrome green, a little bit of nipple yellow, a little white, and the highlight here. And here too, a little bit. I don't know if you all can see the details on the face. I'm gonna just zoom in to show you what I got here. I, I want some contrast, you not know, between some uh, some uh, thicker paint on the face that you see here. You know, on the forehead is the same, and softness here. Okay, and I wanna smooth out this. Okay. The intention is obviously putting attention here and make this pop. What about highlight here? Like making hair cry. I think that adds to the expression. Yeah?
Oh, Perry saying, oh, hello, Francisco. Oh, Perry, thank you. Yeah, oh, this thing here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't pay attention to that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. This has to be just dark. Thank you. Uh, hello, Rebecca. Thank you. Hello, Das. Hello, Perry. I sent you a message, Das. Yeah. I am pleased. Don't forget to press the like button, okay? If, of course, you like my videos. a little bit of light on the lips because she has really thick lips
Hello, Andre. Okay, thank you, Perry. Oh, it's been interesting. When, when you have time to show us some masterpieces from your parents. Oh, I forget that. I should. I will. I don't know when. <laughs> but I will. Hello, Lisa. This is saying I ended up having an old night binge watching many of your other videos. You're so beautiful and I love that you can create such beautiful texture with oil paints. Thank you so much. Okay, let's continue. It's almost two hours. Yeah, that's doing okay. I'm doing pretty good. Tomorrow I'm going to paint a commission, I don't know what time, I'm just waiting for this person to tell me because she lives in Taiwan and pretty sure it's 12 hours difference, you know, between my time and her, and her time, it means that uh, maybe I'm gonna be painting pretty late at night or pretty, pretty early in the morning. I don't know, but I would love just to, for, you know, her to see how I paint her daughter. Another thing, uh, there is a lot of links on my, some links to, you know, the brushes I use. 
on Amazon in, in the case that somebody wants to buy the same brushes I mean they are not exactly the same brushes okay because I changed from I changed my brushes okay I gotta, I gotta pick up this phone okay one second Oh, the brushes. Yeah, yeah. So from time to time, I change the brushes I use, and but it, they are pretty similar to each other. Just soft brushes. For the bristle brushes, I just got just cheaper bristle brushes. And that's usually for the beginning. But sometimes you're gonna see changes from my last vi the last videos for the videos than a year ago. You're gonna see different brushes. You're gonna see that uh, sometimes uh, I just paint with soft synthetic brushes. Now I'm painting at the beginning with bristle, bristle brushes. Yeah. Just the, I think the regular normal changes that we go when we, we discover new brushes or sometimes when we add a new color to the palette. It's been a while since uh, I painted with the Sorn palette, which I like it pretty good. It's always a good practice. Maybe the next portrait. to the comments. Okay. Thank you Ryan Robinson. Thank you Nikolai. Oh thank you so much. Thus I got a uh, coffee. You know there is a link to my coffee this coffee, uh, this coffee, like to people just to say thank you, just you know, buying a coffee. I got a coffee from that so Joe. Thank you so much. Okay, let's. 
Sí. Ok, voy a poner el mouse. Voy a poner el light, el highlight en el nose. Un poco up, creo. Voy a poner los edges. Voy a mantener esto. Sharp edge aquí. Erasing this line here, and I'm gonna add again this, but a little bit here, a little bit here, okay? Just that. Oh, I got Jeff a new member. Thank you so much, Jeff B. I gotta say something about becoming a member. Okay, obviously, I wanna try to answer all your questions when I'm doing a live stream. up a little bit of paint with the same brush that I blend and I go like this you know it's just like blending but at the same time that I'm blending I'm lighting up the color because I pick up a bit just a bit of paint okay look at that let's say here I want to add a little bit of light I go like that just blending just pretty lightly on the air Let's see. Always paying attention to to values. Always paying attention to edges. Or oh, and the drawing. I mean, there's something that we gotta just keep our eyes on the drawing from the beginning to the end. And that's that's something that you know we keep doing that because we compare always you know we always compare with the photograph no need to say that i think Black again. And I soften this. Okay. Squinting. Squinting a lot all the time. Mm -hmm. 
little bit of green. A little bit of green here. Do some touches. a little bit of dark color this is raw umber a little bit of a mid-tone you know this color this brush here these retouches are just the last one since uh, when I don't want to change something like adding a lot of paint again or thicker paint I go lightly you know but I pick up just a little bit of paint with the brush. Okay. Now I'm trying to keep this soft. Soft. No sharp edge. I could do the same on the mouth. Soft. Okay, I could add a sharp edge just here just to make the nose the mouth you know look rounded because when when you when we have a sharp edge that usually pop and both sides kind of recede and that creates the illusion of roundness it works pretty good this kind of easy the, the tricky part is when I say you know soften an edge I know that's pretty difficult to do. Okay, I think I got some expression of on the eyes, which I like because they show some emotion. Yeah, I think they are, and I think the the, the highlight on the eyes at the same time they kind of uh, you know they, I mean, I'm speaking about the highlight on the lower eyelid creates this illusion that she's about to cry which I think is pretty good adds more you know to the to the feeling mm. uh, okay okay mm, what else oh that's good that's oh thank you exploring hello Marina thank you Marina thank you Denisa Denisa thank you Arabi Hola Joaquin. Yeah, I think I'm almost done, man. Eh? What do you think? I'm missing something. What about the, the chin? What about making a, a sharp edge? Do you all think that's affecting the likeness or it's, it's pretty good? I mean, what I mean this, okay? You know, my intention is make the face pop. I don't want to add, add the wrinkles to the beautiful Monica Velucci, but we have to.
Okay, I think I'm almost done. I want to get some 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 values here and there. For example, here. See a little bit of shadow on the nose. Top of the, top of the nose. More than thinking about smaller details, think always about values, okay? If you need to darken up something or light up something, okay, like, like uh, what I'm doing here, how dark is this? I need to darken up this more or light up that a little bit more. The shadow here goes up here a little bit, and here it goes down. Okay. There. Just a little bit of paint. Okay, here. Okay, almost done, almost done. It's time to eat here. Almost done, almost hungry. Yep, my stomach is making noises. It's time to eat, time to go. <laughs> time to find a nice restaurant to eat. Oh, oh. Hello, Mark, Mark Air. Hello, Mervat. Hello, Just Casual. Okay, I think that's it for today. Yeah. Maybe just a couple of minutes, okay? 
just a couple of minutes. Oh, the neck. The neck is looks looks flat. Yeah, I need more light to the neck. Thank you so much, you all, for being here. Okay, I'm gonna paint for just five minutes. I think I got what I wanted from the painting, but still, you know, every time uh, that you paint, and try to get this balance between soft and sharp edges. And lately, getting some texture on the skin. I love the texture, you know, I think that adds a lot, a lot of volume to the face. But, anyway, you know, it's always, I got the feeling that I could, I could have been done more, a bit more, even a bit more. And this uh, thing about balancing soft and sharp edges. Okay. But that's the same feeling I got every time, because this thing, because since it's something that we don't copy, we basically base uh, just this thing about it using our own experience. Thus, uh, makes this kind of tricky, makes this like, um, always thinking like, hey, I should have maybe sharpened an edge in the other place of the face. Or not, you know, who knows? There's not like a lot of variations, a lot of things that we can do, but definitely there are a few things that we can make the painting better. Like uh, here, Mervat was saying that this soft edges add some kind of mystery to the painting. Uh, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I think what happens is that soft edges add some atmosphere to the painting. And that kind of creates this illusion of uh, mystery, which is pretty nice. You know, thank you, thank you. I don't know if I see the mystery yet. Uh, maybe a bit. I mean, uh, unless not, mm, maybe not the way I want it. I love my painting, okay, don't misconfuse me. I love the painting, but we, I think we all got the same feeling, you know, that we could, we could have done a bit more on each painting that we painted. And yeah, we gotta move on to just to the next painting. Okay. Petra is saying, great, great session, time to sleep here. Oh, wow, this, pretty, this must be pretty late there in Germany, Petra. Thank you for being here. Hello, Nikki. Almost done, too. Oh, my God, you've been painting, Nikki. Oh, my God. That's pretty nice. <laughs> uh, Nikki saying, I'm painting along with friends today. Thank you so much, Nikki. Okay, don't forget please to press the like button. That helps a lot my channel. You no. Know, I can make more money. <laughs> Okay. Let, let's go. Okay. I got Merva saying, I think the wrinkles in her neck. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. 
We don't need to do that to Monica Velushi. A little bit for the character, just a little bit. We don't need to, we don't need to copy that. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna just be here just one more minute. to narrow her face here oh well okay that's better yeah that's better a bit too dark maybe too dark uh, that's good that's good just thinking out loud <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's it. Bye, everybody. Oh, oh thank you, Ma Mayor Marlu Liu. Okay. Bye, everybody. Take care, you all. I got a mes message that I don't, I don't understand here from Anna Tessar. Thank you so much, Anna. I got a translation here from Polish. Wow, thank you so much. Don't forget to press the like button, please. You can share the video and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Okay. Bye, everybody. Now I go for real. Bye. Okay, bye.